Hello, Steve. Today is Wednesday, April the 16th. And as I'm sure you are, the first day of the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. After we both made our pits, there was only two series that we differed in. And so far, Montreal defeated Tampa Bay, so that's advantage me. And with Pittsburgh and Dallas also taking care of business, that makes me 3-0 and for the day, and you, 2-1. and Now, obviously, playoff series aren't won in just a day, but we're off to a pretty good start. And today was an interesting day in sports because another league had their playoff schedule created. I know, Steve, it's the league that you care nothing about, and that's the NBA. So if you'll bear with me for a few seconds, I have a team to support. There, much better. Now, I know you really don't care about basketball. What I'm going to talk about today, though, is how I consider basketball to be the superior sport to hockey on a statistical side. Because, to be completely honest, in terms of the enjoyment they out of watching the games, I put them on pretty equal level. I view hockey as a true grind, a gritty affair between two teams that are separated by very little. Both teams spent the entire 60-minute duration looking for those little moments where they can break the game open in one way or another. Because most typical games of hockey range between 3 to 7 goals, most of the game has spent grinding out those few and far between moments where a goal is stored. So basically, both teams fire as much as they can against the opponent in hopes that something will eventually go in. So while this makes for a great game to watch, statistically speaking, it can be kind of boring. And by that, I'm not talking about stats that are carried over long periods of time. I'm talking about individual game stats. You looked at a box store of an individual game, there's not much to look at. A couple dies out of goals, a few dies out of some assists, maybe there's some penalty men thrown in. So over the course of the season, the stats can get very interesting, but on a game-to-game basis, not so much. Where basketball is the complete opposite, game-to-game, the stats are very interesting. Because the final scores of games are, say, like 102 to 99, there's a lot of point scoring. Which brings me to statistical advantage number one for basketball, a high mean. There are three stats in basketball that have a very high mean associated to them, points, rebounds, and assists. A top player in the NBA, let's say Kevin Durant or LeBron James, might average around 30 points a game, maybe 7 rebounds a game, and maybe 7 assists a game. So that's a very high stat average per game to look at. The second statistical advantage that basketball has game to game is a high level of variance. And this, of course, naturally comes with such a high mean. One game, a player could store 40 points, where the next game they could store 10, and it can happen just like that. And it all comes down to if they're having an on game or an off game. And while basketball tends to be a statistically stronger sport, it lends itself very well to fantasy. And of course, some clever people over at NBA.com decided to invent pretty much the greatest fantasy game ever. It's a game I've played and looked forward to every year for quite some time, and it's known as Drive to the Finals. And how it works is very simple. You get to pick one player every day of the NBA playoffs. The points you get are for their points, rebounds, and assists. So you get the total, like if they get 20 points, 10 rebounds, and 6 assists, you get 36 points. But the catch is you can only use a player once during the playoffs. So if you pick LeBron James, you better hope that he performs very well for you. Otherwise, you can't pick him again, and you're probably going to be biting the dust of people who picked him on a much better day. But what makes this game so interesting is that since you can only pick a player once, in the first round you have 16 teams to pick from, but in the next round you have 8. So in one round, you lose eight teams. And that means in order to do well, you need to pick from those eight teams that are going, and only from those eight teams. Because you're going to need the players from the eight teams that advance for the next three rounds. And then in the round after that, you're going to need to pick the next four teams, right? Otherwise, you're going to have very little to pick from in the last rounds. So basically, the game can turn into chaos pretty quickly if you think one way, and all of a sudden, a team starts doing the other thing, and you didn't see it coming. What I tend to do in this game is I try to find the three or four series that I know are going to end up in a certain way and pick from the other team. And then I wait out the series that I'm not as confident in, and hopefully a couple games in, I'll start to have a better sense as to who I think will win the series. And it ends up turning into a really fun game of strategizing. If you followed basketball in any way, I would highly recommend taking part in this game because it's pretty much the greatest strategic fantasy game I've ever seen. But since you don't follow basketball, I can't really see you getting that into it, so I'll just let you live vicariously through my pits. So I'll loosely keep you informed on how I'm doing this pool in my future videos. And speaking of the NBA playoffs, a couple of interesting notes to pass along. For starters, the team I cheer for, the Dallas Mavericks, are in pretty tough just like your Detroit Red Wings. 
They finished as the eighth seed in the Western Conference and faced arguably the best team in basketball, the San Antonio Spurs. So I don't like their chances. Also, the only Canadian team, the Toronto Raptors, made the playoffs for the first time in a long time. And even though they finished in the third seed, the team they're playing, the sixth seed of Brooklyn Nets, I think are the slight favorite to win this. Let's not forget, a little while back, a third seeded Raptor team, who was a young team inching their way into the playoffs for the first time, lost to a New Jersey Net team full of grizzled veterans. Which may have been a while ago, but the situation is pretty much identical to this one. So I expect this young Raptor team to learn the hard way what the playoffs are all about. I've decided that I'm most confident that the top two seeds from the East and the West in the NBA are going to move on. So for my first picks and drive to the finals, I'm going to really focus in on those teams in the 7 and 8 spots who are going down. So we'll see how that works out for me. So finishing up with Battleship, your shot, J3, was totally a hit. And I will continue to fire into open waters at D4. So I conclude by saying, even though I highly doubt their chances, let's go Mavericks.